Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that's not afraid of you anymore, Derek. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Burning Rome from Sun Tzu Games. Burning Rome from Sun Tzu Games is a two to four player light card game based on the Roman Empire, the Roman Republic, the, those kooky Romans, and all of their various uh, adversaries that they encountered like the Carthaginians. Essentially the game has four different decks of four different factions, and you, at the beginning of the game you will pick your faction. Now, like I say, this plays two to four. I've only played the two player game, so I'm just going to rate it on that. Essentially you each get your own kind of player board that you put a meeple on, which will track your army strength and your command points. Now, if at any time during the game, either your command points or your army strength gets down to zero, then, of course, you lose the game. In between the two players, you're going to place kind of the turn tracker, which goes up to six turns for each player, and then once you get to the end of the sixth turn, you can simply go back to one and keep going. It's not a timer like that. So essentially, at the beginning of the game, you can either use the tutorial decks that they uh, give you in the rulebook, or you can essentially uh, create a deck. You can build a deck based on a number of points that you're given, and you place those cards in a deck, you then shuffle the deck. Then what you do is at the beginning of the game, uh, each player is going to take out a number of cards. Usually the attacker gets, I think, uh, one less card than the defender. Now on your turn, you're going to do a number of things, but essentially what you're going to do is play cards. You're going to play cards from your hand, and you can play as many cards as you want, but you have to pay the CP cost, the command point cost. Once you play it, you've established a column. Now you can play, of course, three columns across, that is your center, your right, and your left flank. Now, you don't have to place them specifically in any order right there, but you're going to go ahead and you're going to place them out in front of you uh, in whichever way you want uh, at the beginning of the game. But as soon as you establish a column, as soon as you put somebody out there, it's not eligible for attack that turn. Once you establish a column, you're just essentially deploying there. You are not, of course, actively attacking that turn. That will come into play the next turn. Now, here's the thing. You can place cards directly down in front of you, but then you can also place cards on top of them. Each card has an attack and defense point, but they also have kind of a, a skirmish value and a siege value. So if a, if a card is face down on the, the first card down, its attack is always going to hit and its defense will always work. But as you add more cards on top of it, uh, every card that is covered, their attack and defense will work. But the card that is on top will only, of course, activate its skirmish uh value and its uh, siege value for attack and defense. So in that sense, um, some of the cards are going to be more valuable to you as attacking units and then some are better as kind of rear echelon units. Now you can only stack up to three cards per column with the exception of a general. You can play a general as a fourth uh, card on any one column and that's of course going to help you during the game as well. And Every card will have certain abilities, certain triggered abilities. Now, some of these will be persistent abilities. There's a little hourglass symbol that says these things are ongoing, but it may say when during your, your phase you, they actually kick in, but you'll get them every turn. Some cards will have an ability that happens as soon as you put the card down, then that ability will trigger. And then there's other abilities that will trigger kind of at different times. But critically, if you cover up a card in front of you, then you will lose the ability of the covered card. You only get the ability from a card that is visible. Now, once you've played all your cards, um, then you go to the attack phase, assuming you've already had all your uh, columns established, or at least one of your columns established. So essentially what you do is you take all the attack value of your uh, first and middle cards, and then the uh, skirmish value of your last laid card, you add those together, and then you compare it with the defensive and siege value of your opponent. Of course, he's looking uh, as first and second middle cards, they are uh, looking at their defense value, and the last laid card would be looking at the siege value. That's his defense factor. So you add up the attack versus the defense. If there's a difference, if, if you've got more attack than defense, whatever the difference is, of course, is applied to the army strength, that knocks it down. 
So if there are no cards directly opposite some of your cards, then of course you're going to be knocking them down with all of your attack points uh, on that turn. And it behooves you to fill those gaps to try to make sure you've got some kind of defense against the enemy's attack. Now also on your turn, before you do anything else, you will have a chance to gain two uh, command points back or you can draw a card. And this is going to be important because you're going to be bleeding command points as you order cards on the board and of course you're going to be losing uh, army strength, but you're also going to be losing the cards you need to get more cards in your hand in order to play them for attack and defense. So you go back and forth like this turn by turn. You're gaining CP points you're, or a card, then you're playing those cards, spending CP, CP points, you're trying to get the best combinations of cards out there with abilities and attack and defense values, and then you're moving into the resolve combat phase where you're dealing damage to your opponent. As soon as you can knock out all of your opponent's uh, CP or army strength, then you win Burning Rome. So Burning Rome is a fairly light card game. Um, that you know, kind of has that, that, that deck building mechanic in there where you can go ahead and you can get um, the cards you want before the game. You can spend so many points to build the deck you want, and then you draw from the deck as the game's going, and then you place the cards where you want them in order to, um, to fight these battles. It's a very good kind of tactical battle card game. You know, it's, it's very good in, in the way these, these mechanics work with regard to... Um, the text abilities being shown and you know the attack and defense and I, I'm not a person that generally likes deterministic combat just numbers games generally I don't like that um, here I, I liked it because it was a short enough game that, that it was fun that it was interesting um, I, do, I do have to mention though this is a game that you really feel limited by the cards you draw now you can you can determine what cards you want at the beginning of the game but you feel limited by you know there's those tough choices of do do you want to to get to get cards, or you want to get command points, or you can spend cards. But at the same time, it, it, it just feels very limiting because if you don't have the cards you need, if you can't play the cards and field the cards, you know, if you just got cards that are maybe good on, you know, defense, but you're not getting any that are good on attack, you're just not going to be able to, you know, get through your your enemy's defenses. And so that's you know, it's a little disappointing that that was felt as limiting as it did in that sense. Um, and two, when something like that happens. It's a game that you can kind of see the end of the game coming two or three turns before it does. And that's, you know, I'm not a fan of that. If I see the end of the game coming, I just want to finish it and, and start again. But of course, if I'm the one losing, I don't want to deny the other guy, you know, the fun of his victory. Um, I was playing with my friend Matthias, and he actually said that he felt that um, when he won, and uh, we both won games, he said when he won, he felt like, it was just because of the draw. It wasn't because of a lot of the decisions he was making. And I can, I can see his point there. Um, what I'm getting at is Burning Rome for me was kind of a mixed bag. I really do like the system of laying down the cards and, and when the abilities kick in. And so, but there's so much chance and, and you're so limited with the, with, with the draw that it, that it, that it yeah, kind of takes away from that. However, that is mitigated by the fact that it's such a short game. Like I said, this is a 20-minute game. It's not a hard game to learn. It's not a hard game to play. So if you're looking for something a little different and you like kind of the era, you like Rome, you like ancient battles and those sorts of things, which I do, uh, this game's fun. You know, I can see me breaking this out, you know, once in a while. It's just kind of a, you know, a filler for game night or something like that. Um, I can see me playing this again, absolutely. But it's just not one that's, that's, that's going to be the, you know, go-to game when I want a fun, you know, tactical card game. Um, I think there are other games that maybe do it a little better. But I do like the theme. I like some of the mechanics here. Like them, just don't love the game. So I guess my recommendation here is try it before you buy it, um, with those caveats. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Working Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. Derek, I wonder what you're up to right now. Probably, probably married, have a family, have a job. You're still winning, Derek. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time. Play this card to add plus two to the roll.